Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hello, today we're going to uh, work on a horseshoe. We're going to make us a little ladder opener like we forge sometimes just for a fun little project. Now this is made out of just a used shoe, nothing special or nothing fancy. Now, all those, you can't really make a, a good usable knife out of these because there's not a lot of carbon steel in these. These are pretty soft steel. Uh, they do make kind of an interesting and unique gift. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we've already cut the horseshoe in half. Or basically, we went past half a little bit to give us a little bit more meat for the blade. And now we're just going to need to straighten this out. So we're going to have to go in the fire and start getting her hot. So we'll go in the, into the fire here and we'll start to heat that thing up. And we'll, we'll heat the whole piece up and straighten the whole piece before we ever start to forge our blade. So we'll kind of take a gander here and see what we got going on. Didn't take too long to heat that up, maybe just a little more on the end. While that does heat up, we're going to switch over here to the anvil and get prepared for our next step is straighten that up. Now I've seen different blacksmiths and different folks do these kind of things and they'll want to use the horn of the anvil to try to straighten their piece out. You can do that, but it's kind of dangerous because you're, you're trying to hit down and do something that this horseshoe does not want to do. And if you don't have a real good hold right here with your tongs, that thing can go flying. So if you ever want to try one of these, you need you a turning fork. You can also put it in the hardy hole there of the anvil, but I prefer to put a turning fork in. We'll go over here and we'll, we'll get our horseshoe half get a good hold on it, and we'll just come in here and we'll start to straighten this. So as you straighten it, as I said, you're doing what it doesn't want to do that naturally. So it's going to want to twist, but it's controlled. It, it's controlled in such a way it's not going to get away from you if you've got a good hold. And as you can see, it's got a twist in it. So we'll put it back in the fire. That's no big deal. We'll get our hammer ready. Next time we come out, we'll, we'll straighten a little bit more of that out, and then we'll lay it on the anvil, and we'll take a hammer to it and uh, straighten the whole thing back out. We'll keep doing that until we get it to the straightness we desire. Now, as I was mentioning about the gas forge and taking away some of the uh, problems that you have with coal, probably one of the largest ones is a controlled temperature. Uh, I've done this for quite a while. I started blacksmithing in 2001, and I sure don't know everything there is to know about it by far. I learn all the time. But one thing that I have learned by using the coal and using it as my primary source all these years is kind of to be able to judge by the color of the fire. Now, I don't want to stare into it and just stare, stare, stare into that because it is hard on your eyes. But I can tell by the color of the fire, the color of my piece that's in the fire, and also, my hand here kind of has a mind of its own. It knows what it's kind of doing. As my eye looks into there, if I think it's getting a little too hot, I back off, I turn it, and I cool my fire down. If I don't think it's doing enough, I maybe turn it a little faster. But I prefer more of a just nice, easy, calm, steady rhythm into there to get it up to where I want to do it and get it up there to the heat that I want to see it take. All right, we'll come out here a little bit more and a little bit more straight. You see that straightens out right there. Lay it on the anvil. Take some of that out of there. Okay, we got some here. We need to straighten that up a little bit more. So as I was saying with the regulated fire, you know just exactly the temperature. You can leave it on all day. If you want 2,000 degrees, 2,000 degrees is what you'll have once you get it where you want it. It'll sit there all day. 
where I'm cranking here, if I want 2,000 degrees, I've got to try to, by experience, and this crank and the air, I got to maintain that 2,000 degrees myself. And once I stop cranking as that, my fire already begins to cool off some. So back over here we'll go. Give this just a little bit more. That looks pretty good right there. Let's we'll straighten it out. So as you can see here, we've got a nice area from this area down for blade. We got the handle up this way. Here's our crease mark where our nails were. So into the fire we go. get it straightened out enough that way I can get the blade back in and start to work on the hand or the uh, blade a little bit. So we'll go back to the farm. Alright, down in deep. I always think of blacksmithing and how my coal is arranged. I, uh, I like to eat. I'm sure y'all do too, but I like to make a sandwich out of that. I want good fire on the bottom. I want to lay my piece of steel right in the middle just like bread and then a nice layer of heat right over the top. That, that you, got, you got heat coming up, heat coming down, that puts heat all through your piece instead of uh, being cold on one side, hot on the other, if you will. And it's all going to be hot, but it will be hotter on one side than the other because one side would be hotter than the other the way the fire sets if you don't have heat on top and below. So while that heats up, we're going to take our bending fork out. We won't need it for a moment. Get rid of some of our scale here. We're gonna, we're just gonna use the very edge of the anvil to uh, define where our blade and where our handle starts and stops. Uh, some might use the top and the bottom fuller. Uh, I'm just gonna use the anvil for instead. <laughs> Should be warm enough to do what we want to do. Right out here to the edge of the anvil. I'm going to find right about where that is. We're just going to do that. <clears throat> so that don't look like much, does it? But that's where we're going to start our blade and where we're going to start the handle. Right there. So now all we got to do is start to draw this out into a blade. As we talk just momentarily about the, the heat and the regulation of temperature, advantage of gas, uh, another advantage of gas over coal is impurities in what's in the actual fire. Uh, you've probably all heard of having a clinker. A lot of people say, well, especially the old timers, they have something in their back, old muscle, or their back's a little out of whack, and they always say they've got a clinker in their back. Well, that's kind of an old blacksmith uh, kind of term as well as, as coal burns and it gets impurities and scale off my metal, all, all these different things, it starts to build up a uh, kind of a glob. Well, if that glob takes more heat than the actual coal and you've got your blade resting against that, you're going to burn a hole in that blade if you're not real careful. So with gas, you take out, you eliminate uh, that problem as well. So that's uh, another advantage gas. Now one thing about gas that, that I don't like is the fact of how noisy they are. It's very noisy, a gas forge. I, I don't know if you've ever heard one, but you, you can't hardly hear yourself think. And I like to hear the blower turn. I like to hear the air come through the fire and get the smell of the coal. And I guess that's just how I kind of learn. I'm going to give that a little bit more crease. Just a little deeper, like that. Now we're going to start doing our blade. Now what I want to do is I want to square this up in a fashion that I can start to draw and pull that out. Not just absolutely hitting 
straight down to flatten it, I'm actually trying to pull my stem. Now as I'm doing that, there's a lot of things happening for every action, there's a reaction, so my handle's wanting to move, uh, my blade's wanting to go one way or list the other, so each time I'll come back through, and each time I want to do this, I want to uh, straighten everything back up before I go to hammer it again. We, we do a lot of hammering things crooked, and then we do a lot of hammering things back straight as we work. We just add a little more coal to fire here. We, as we burn the coal up, it starts to disappear, so we always got to add some new coal back to the fire. Whenever you do that, well, you'll see a little puff there, and then probably a little smoke and some soot to take off. Those are some of those impurities that I was talking about, the gas forge doesn't have to contend with. So we'll come out of the fire here. And we'll just give this blade a couple of hits. As you can see I'm pulling that too. We're taking metal from the top side, bring it down to the bottom side. Probably think, well. I've never seen a knife with a cut off end. <laughs> we'll take care of that. You don't have to worry about that. So I'm looking at it there. You see we got a little bit of a dog leg started. We'll lay it back on the end. Straighten that out. Take that out. I want that fairly straight. That looks pretty good right there. So we're back into the fire. As we work that blade, that blade's going to want to curve kind of like a banana. So I'm watching for that. It's, it's almost inevitable that it will as we work with it. So we want to, I'm kind of keeping that from happening. If I didn't get it out and straighten it out there like I have a couple of times, then it would develop that. So I'm correcting something that you're not seeing actually taking place. You might see it a little bit here. Right. Come back up the fire. Hold on a sec. You can see it's starting to take a little bit of a curve right there. That's what I'm talking about, curving like a banana. So we're going to come in here and worry about doing that. Now at some point through here, I'm not going to hammer back any further. I'm going to have a, a definition that the blade comes out and it's going to come here. It's going to have a little hump. Uh, just kind of a thing I do, things that I do that's knife wise. Just a flat back blade. I like the, I like the curve, the feeling of that. Gives it a little prettier of a look. Now as I'm hammering on that blade, that blade that once was a certain thickness because of the thickness of the horseshoe starts to become thinner and it takes heat faster. So we definitely don't want to be careless at this point and lose our blade in the fire because it can burn it, burn it through. Now, you, I, part of this is kind of behind me and you're not seeing it. But I want to make sure that you see that whenever I'm hammering my blade, I've got my handle actually off of the anvil. I'm not hammering on my blade and the handle laying on there at the same time because as my blade gets thinner, my handle's still thick. So my blade's going to get out of line with my handle. So as I'm hammering, I'm keeping it above keeping the handle off my anvil so as I just keep the blade on the anvil at all times. As you can see, where we hammered on it a little earlier, longer because of the thickness of the blade, as it gets thinner, just as it takes heat faster, it also releases heat quicker. You've got the anvil, and the anvil, we've got 65, 70 degrees in here. Uh, that may not sound cold, but the anvil's basically cold. It's colder than the steel, so as I lay that hot piece of steel on there, the anvil starts to absorb the heat out of it. The air is cooler than the actual blade, so it's pulling the heat out as well. 
and it doesn't take quite too long for the for the heat all to leave and you notice that by the color where we come out of the the fire we're nice bright orange and when we go back in a lot of times we're to a dull red just the pulling with the hammer I'm trying to also as I'm doing that mentally trying not to twist that blade with this hand. If I'm hammering on this like this and this hand here begins to turn this way and I'm hammering down this way or vice versa, then you're going to have this big sweep. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep everything nice and straight and as square as possible. And we'll concentrate and draw on that point. I'm going to Try to do this a little different than normal. That way you can get a little bit better of a view. So I'm going to lay this down here. Now I'm watching down there at the bottom. Now you see how that wants to roll over a little bit? you got to stop there. And you got to get that tip back out. And straighten that back out. Because that's what it wants to do. So we're going to keep doing this several times over. And we're going to take our time. We don't want to rush that. And as you see as I hammer down on that what was a nice quarter inch or so of uh, you know it, it was all symmetrical all the way down through the same thickness now as I hammer down on that I'm basically what's called upsetting that so it's going to get thicker up here on this end because I'm I'm squashing the steel down so it has no other uh, reason but to expand and swell so we'll have to take that out now that's going to give us even more to draw out for our point so that's not a problem in fact that's what we want to see We've got a lot of friends who are professional bladesmiths. A lot of those guys hammer uh, Damascus. Makes beautiful knives, pattern welded Damascus knife blades. are very sought after. I, I don't really do that, just for the reason there's so many other people that do that. That I'm not necessarily. I don't. I don't enjoy doing things that everybody else does all the time. Not that we don't all do a lot of the same things, but knives. It isn't my bread and butter. There's a lot of people that do them. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. And uh, I don't know what the going price is on some of those anymore, but like for a billet, what I mean by billet is a square piece of stock that they would hammer a blade out of is, they don't sell it by the foot. They sell that stuff by the inch. And some of it gets very, very expensive. But you sure end up with a knife that is a work of art, a work of true craftsmanship. And I like to look at them. I don't own any. And it's hard telling how long that they've worked on those knives to ever get to be able to do that kind of work. And uh, whenever they work on those knives, I don't think they do a whole lot of grinding either. When you're grinding with a big grinder and you got sparks going six, eight foot in the air, you're grinding away your knife material. So uh, if you're paying $20, $30 an inch for knife billet, I'd just soon have mine in the blade, not out on the, on the floor. So as we continue to work on our blade, we're still working that point down, trying to keep everything and even. And every one of these knives turn out different. I've never made two that are the same as they are unique to their self. So as you see there, we're, we're getting there. We've got a ways to go yet. But we've got a, we've got a good shape and a good flow. I hammer it, kind of smack that a little bit. I'm just not the middle of the scale that's on the blade. I could be, if I was really getting serious about a really fancy knife blade, I, uh, each time I would be taking a, a brush, a wire brush, and I'd be knocking that scale off there because we don't want that on there for one of them beautiful blades that you see on the covers of magazines. But for a horseshoe knife, it'd probably be all right. You want it to look kind of rustic. Maybe just like it come off the trail. It doesn't take long to get our point heated out. It's getting thinner as we go. 
and I've got my hammer at, at the same angle. You know, I'm not hitting down like this. I've got my hammer at the same angle of the blade that I'm wanting to do. Pretty important. You might think, well, you just hit down on it. Well, if I hit down on it like that, you can see what's going to happen. So we don't do that. That's just something I take for granted, too. I just do those things, and that's just how they work out. Sometimes I do this and the end of the wall, I don't realize some of the little things that, that I've learned. All right, we're getting there. Hopefully you can see I am just focusing, just focusing on the point. You can also come up here on the anvil, find the curvature of the anvil. Help yourself out a little bit that way, like I just did there. This anvil, this whole anvil is made to use. Uh, there isn't any part of it that you can't use to manipulate your metal however you need to do it. So, we, we ain't afraid to make that anvil use however you want to do it. Still looking for straight. We're blades good and straight and true with our with our handle, where we want it. Just a little bit more out there. Here we go. Just, I've got my hammer at an angle, I've got my knife at an angle, and I'm just working that edge, and I'm watching each and every little hammer blow that I do for what's happening. I don't want to get out of crooked. Back out here to the anvil again. We're going to work on them places. It's a little thick. You may say, well, how can you really tell laying on the side like that if it's a little thick? because there's where it's thicker so on a grand scale my blades coming across here this way where it's thickest it's coming here this way and then down I'm thin here thin here thick here in this middle that's where I know I need to take my hammer and I need to feather that in and do what we just done I don't really see anything much left of that that needs done it's still Enough, I can still do a little if I want to. So that's basically how, if I'm going to forge out a, a knife out of a horseshoe, just a little letter opener. That's kind of what I do. I've seen some that's just got an edge ground on them. Uh, whenever you're talking a forged knife, well, this is kind of what I have in mind for forged. Now, if a person wants to get crazy, they can sand all that down and uh, polish that blade out and all, but uh, we're just going to leave it like that. We might put a little bit of an edge on it with a file after it cools off a little bit. And uh, Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage on RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit Dr. Earl Harris.